day. And it takes time to understand the new design methodologies to bring these out so that Paul can show a Sandy Bridge demo on stage while we're just beginning the Westmere ramp. It takes the investments that we make today, and it means you'll have the confidence as you develop our platforms that you'll know that those nodes continue in a two-year cycle, and you can depend uh, upon your products and your developments to take advantage of them. So two years ago on the stage, we talked about this SRAM. It was a whopping 291 million bits and you know 1.9 billion transistors. And like clockwork, it's in production today. I wish I could describe the incredible effort that's gone into it by our manufacturing technologists and the people who develop these processes because as you develop these, you need to cut your defect levels in half to be able to get the yields that you need and not have extraneous problems impact your designs. It's a 50% area reduction. It's our second generation of IK metal gate where we've already produced 200 million and understand a great deal about how that technology works. And the other point to understand is this is better than any other 32 nanometer or 28 nanometer transistor that you might read about. The characteristics of this 32 nanometer technology are far beyond that which has been reported anywhere in the industry. So it really is a phenomenal 32 nanometer technology. The shrink and the Nehalem, all this promise of these products for Nehalem, we're working on in the factories today to produce it for Q1 products that you'll see on the marketplace. This will enhance us to shrink the die or add new features like Sean talked about, the encryption engine that's going to be added to Westmere and hardware. And we'll be able to bring it in volume to many, many different price points and the many different applications that we're looking at for our technologies. Early this year, we announced our $7 billion investment in four different factories. Some you've heard of before where development's taking place like D1D. D1C is taking a more prominent role, and I'll get to that in a minute in terms of what we're doing for SOC technology development to enhance our product line. And what this, uh, the other two fabs are Fab 32 in Arizona and then Fab 11X. Tremendous amount of logic production experience in all four of these factories. They are new. We're either expanding or revising these factories to incorporate the new 32 nanometer equipment, and they're ready to go whenever the product demand is required. It's the people who are enabled or who have the capability to deliver this and deliver it on a new cycle every two years. Sean talked about the 22 nanometer technology and I'd like to just hold up the way for one more time. So I have to use this demo twice because the boss gets to use it once, but it really is phenomenal. It deserves to be held up here twice. 22 nanometer technology on functioning, extremely dense 2.9 billion transistor uh, uh, product. Um, if we could shift this to the next slide, what I want to go into is a little bit more of things that Paul didn't say. You know, the work to refine the process goes on because we have test vehicles in addition to the SRAM to refine the yields, to take advantage of the uh, circuit characterization needed to bring this on for microprocessors in the future. It also helps us debug the new process equipment because you get a very large array. You can understand the capability across a large dimension. It's more difficult than manufacturing just a few transistors. So this capability is here today. If we go to the next slide, I want to talk about one other piece. The smallest um, transistor is 0.092 <laughs> square microns. But there's another one for the first time. Usually we show you one SRAM, and this one shows you a second one. It's a higher voltage, or it's a lower voltage, and slightly larger because we're working in parallel on the lower power transistor at the same time we are the higher power transistor for our IN microprocessors. Not only that, there are test circuitry on here for analog, for IOs, and for other key features that we need, not only for the super fast CPUs, but for integrated SOCs that will come to market when this technology is ramped in production. So those are the circuits that we're working on today, not just for CPUs. Really an outstanding capability. <clears throat> so we've talked about 
this SOC business and what it means to us. The wider range of this continuum of devices from high end to low end and different applications. And what's required. And what I want to talk about is what it takes in the factory and the planning systems and the design and capabilities within the company to make us more than CPUs. To expand it, we've talked about our consumer electronics, we've talked about embedded, and we've talked about handhelds. These three market segments, Intel's been pretty clear that we're focusing on for opportunities in the future. What I want to go back to is 45 nanometer, though. People write about Intel as new to SOCs, but if you look in each one of the categories we're producing, and you'll see at the show during these three days, different examples from Sodaville and Consumer Electronics, which has system on chip features for the consumer market. You heard Sean talk about Jasper Forest, which is two Nehalems with, again, a different level of system level integration to target that for communication in other markets. And lastly, Lincroft, which is part of the Morristown platform, to bring that SOC to market for small, low power, very, very efficient laptop, or uh, very, very efficient 